start? Well, start with first first of all, I'm not a voice actor. Do you want me to play music still? Um, sure. Alright, so first of all, I'm not a voice actor. If it sounds like I'm reading this, it's probably because I am. And I can already hear Justin criticizing my non-conversational tone. Anyways, here's the drama life you never requested. Nearly three decades ago, I was born in Seoul, South Korea. My dad's family was originally from North Korea, before North and South Korea were two different countries, and my mom's family was originally from Jeju Island. A little before I turned two, my parents packed up a couple suitcases and took a plane, or probably three or four at that point, to Africa. More specifically, Kenya. Even more specifically, the village of Lele in Maasai land. My mom was pregnant at the time they moved to Kenya, so shortly after they arrived, my little sister was born in December 1991. Yay! My family lived out in the middle of nowhere with no running water, electricity, and pretty much everything else we take for granted these days. My sister and I mostly colored a lot, wore matching clothes, played with sticks on giant anthills, and went to bed when the sun set at 6 p.m. every day. Because that's when the sun sets on the equator every day. Sister number three came along in August 1994. My dad snuck us into the hospital and sister number two and I had to hide in the bathroom whenever the nurse or doctor came by. Then, my family moved to Ethiopia and I started kindergarten. In September 1996, sister number four was born with an umbilical cord wrapped around her neck. Thankfully, the doctor was able to sort it out and our family was complete. My dad, mom, me, sister number two, sister number three, and sister number four. Ethiopia is the first place I ever remember leaving. It was after I finished second grade and I remember being at some friend's house or maybe they were at our house, but it was a couple days before we left and I just remember hiding under the dining room table and crying until I fell asleep. From there, my parents moved to a city in the middle of nowhere, Texas called Van. I experienced my first tornado drill, played a lot of Oregon Trail, and learned the Pledge of Allegiance. But we came back to Kenya the following year and I was largely based there until I graduated from high school. I saw plenty of animals, went to the Indian Ocean once a year, and had friends from all over the world which made it really weird when I went to college in Michigan where the only animals that were around were squirrels, their beach was actually a lake, and most of the people around me were white Americans. I really hated my first couple years of college. I thought that everyone around me was ignorant and I was so much more cultured than they were. Since then, I've realized I was just mean back then. And being mean isn't cool, kids. I didn't know what I wanted to study in college. I actually never particularly enjoyed school. I wasn't bad at it, but I also just didn't really care that much. I went into college as an undecided major and basically took gen ed courses until the last day I could declare a major. I went for a double major in business communications and studio art and also a minor in ESL as some kind of weird last minute decision to try and do everything. At some point during my college career, I developed a system of getting through coursework that consisted of creating a master checklist of every single assignment I had for all my classes that semester. Throughout the year, I basically just made my way down the list any moment I had time, and it allowed me to finish all my coursework before assigned due dates. This gave me more time and peace of mind from not having to do work last minute all the time. I guess I figured out my own way to do school well, and beating the system in that way made school a lot more fun for me. I worked in the States as a graphic designer for a year after I graduated. I went through a bit of a quarter life crisis at this point, like, oh my gosh, is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? At which point I was forwarded a TEDx talk by my advertising school professor. I learned about some startup in Cambodia that was doing marketing for good causes. After that year, my US visa expired, I left Grand Rapids, the city I've lived in for the longest to this day, and bounced between Korea and Kenya for a few months. This was actually a really depressing time in life. Not many people talk about post-graduation darkness, but it's just a weird time. You're coming out of a time in your life where you're surrounded by people your age that share similar interests and lifestyles. You're all working towards a goal of graduating. And once you graduate, you're on this high of having accomplished a major milestone in life. You're all bright-eyed and ready to join the real world in a field relevant to what you studied. And then you quickly realize that job hunting is super hard and the people you're competing against aren't just other college grads, but pretty much everyone looking for a job. I remember being really discouraged at this point. 
I thought I had left the U.S. on my accord, but thought maybe I should have applied for a visa and tried to stay. I wondered if I made the right decision studying what I did. I didn't really like living at home after having been on my own for five years. It was just a really weird time. In June 2013, the company in Cambodia reached out saying, Hey, are you still interested in moving to Phnom Penh? I packed up my bags and moved the next week. The company paid me a small stipend of $500 a month for my first three months. At that point, I was excited at the idea of doing anything that I didn't really care that I came out at zero at the end of every month. I loved my job. I was learning new stuff all the time. I got to travel for work, which was my dream. I met tons of cool people, had an awesome flat, and rode a bicycle everywhere. I had moved to Cambodia for three months, but ended up staying three years. During this time, I took a trip to Lebanon and met Justin. Well, I guess I took a trip to Lebanon to meet Justin, and the rest is history. Actually, the rest of the story is, we started dating, I left my job and life in Cambodia, and about a year later, Justin and I got super lucky and signed on a four country video project together and got to travel to China, Myanmar, Bangladesh, and India. That kicked off our life of work and travel. We were on the move, living out of our suitcases, and flying places without knowing where we'd end up next for around two years. We got engaged, married, and married again sometime between that time. And then we got tired of not having a home, so we signed a lease for an apartment here in Seoul. Justin is learning Korean, and I am learning how to be more Korean. And we'll see how that goes.